In this movie, we're going to show how you can create a parametric texture or a bitmap texture and use either the rapid texture function or the toolpath distortion to cut that part quicker than you would with the normal toolpathing. So uh, first, let's come here and let's just create a, a shape. We're going to do a 30 by 20 rectangle. And now I'm going to come here and apply a a flat, no thickness relief add will, and many of these will do the same thing when there's no previous relief on the contour. And here I have no thickness, so I'm just going to hit apply. Now I'm going to come here and let's go to our one of our textures, and I'm going to go to the flow texture. I have a, a texture on here, so I'm just going to apply this, and I see I have a height of 0.5 inches here. So my resulting relief is going to be 0.5 inches thick. All right, now we'll take a look at this and see that we've uh, we've added a texture now to this this contour, and we're going to uh, attempt to cut it out a little quicker. Now the first way you could do this is by using rapid texture. And if I'm going to toolpath this normally, I'm going to select this part. I'm going to go to the hatch fill, select a ball nose tool, perhaps a half inch or three eighth inch tool, and then do it all with a ninety percent overlap. So at a half inch and a ninety percent overlap, you're going to you're going to move over 0.1 or 0.05 in each pass. So with a part that's 20 inches long, you're going to have a lot of passes to cover this material. To use rapid texture to do this, first of all, I'm going to make sure that I've noticed that this, this material or the relief is still on top of the plate. So that's how you want to do it when you're using rapid texture to, to uh, create a, a tool path, more or less, for a, a, a 3D relief texture. Uh, now I'm going to come here and go to Rapid Texture. I'm going to make my panel size 30 by 20. And I'm going to have a little overcut here, 0.2. Now I'm going to go the, to the displacement. And I kind of want this to be more or less true to a toolpath. So I'm going to have a longer wavelength. I'm not going to move too much from my horizontal amplitude. I'll say 0.12. Uh, for my offset, I can do, you know, again, depending upon the bit size I'm going to use. I'm going to do a half inch bit, so I'm going to say 0.12 here, and then we're going to do noise and randomize. Now as far as the depth, we, if we want to keep it closest as possible to the surface and not introduce any kind of a, a, a depth variation, then I'm going to put a pretty small vertical amplitude value. You know, I could go as, as small as I want there. All right, now we've got these parameters. Oh, and one thing we should have done before we went to that tool is we need to select both the relief and the rapid texture seed contour. Now that I have both of these selected, um, it, it'll remember all these last parameters I put in here. I'm going to hit apply. And the toolpath or the, the rapid texture contours it created will take this texture into, uh, into consideration. So now I'm going to come here and just apply my half inch ball nose tool. Say 0.1 for the depth, follow contour, and of course I'd set my feeds and speeds if I was really going to cut this. Now let's simulate this and let's zoom in here. And uh, we have a part in here. And that's our, our relief. So I want to kind of select this other piece. So I'm going to. Uh, just move my down arrow once, select this, hit Control X. Create a new layer. Control or uh, right click and say paste to active layer. Now I've put that part back in the, in the other layer. Now I can come here and if I want to move this back, I'm just going to hit my up arrow one time. So now I'm going to come to my other part, select this. Turn on all layers. I just did that so I could easily use that that outline to mask where my toolpath applies. And so I have a cup, a few colors here. I'll go ahead and use 75, which is a good blend of detail and time. If I just want to make it faster, I'd go with 50 DPI or, or 50 DPI for the simulation. Or if I really wanted some good detail, I'd bump it up to 100. But here you can see we're, we're creating the texture from the parametric texture, but the rapid texture is doing it. And instead of moving over 0.05 in each pass, we're moving over 0.12 in each pass. So you can 
see just by the reduced number of passes, you're going to considerably reduce the amount of cut time. You do lose a little of the smoothness. You're not going to get any smooth surfaces with this technique, but that's not uh, what's expected here. We're just expecting to get um, a little bit of a texture in there as well. But that, that's this one technique. Now let's come back here. And hit F12 to go back to the top view. I'm going to come in here and let's select this one. And I'm going to do a Control X. Go back to our other layer. And I actually want to move this back to the first layer. So let's use our change layer. Move back to layer one. Zoom in and out will show me that uh, that part has moved. And now I'll paste this, this relief into this layer. Now the other way to do this is to come here and I'm going to now move this into the plate. And now we're going to do a, tool, a, hatch, um, a hatch fill. And we're going to use, a, again, a, a bigger tool here. So let's go to a half inch tool. The depth here of this part is 0.5. So now we have to be a little more precise with our depths. I'm going to allow an overcut. So you have point 0.1 here, and we're going to create this part. Now, here's where I normally, if I wanted to do this as a smooth relief, would put this in at 90%. But in this case, I'm going to leave it in at 50%. Now, I'm going to come here and go to Toolpath, Distort Toolpaths. And we're going to put a little wavelength in here, let's say of 2, jitter 0.1. We're going to say 0.125, just so we don't move too much with our horizontal amplitude. And vertical amplitude, we'll put 0. And we'll hit apply here. So now we've, uh, we've made it so that we're cutting this at a 50% overlap instead of a... a uh, 10 percent overlap or, or 90 percent overlap excuse me 10 percent step over but a 90 percent overlap so the the amount of cut time is going to be very much reduced here now this time let's just say make the plate the same size as my selection that way when my plate is that size then i'll just won't worry about masking where this simulation occurs and we'll just make it happen inside the plate so now here again, we're, we're creating a creating a relief that is showing the, the inner part there. Now this is a this is probably too much. Uh, I might I might want to decrease this to, or increase the step over to maybe 75 percent. But uh, at 75 percent with that little wiggle in there, then we're going to start to to be able to see the texture more and more. Um, and that distortion will allow it to fully cut the part and, and add a secondary type of, of um, texture in there. Right, so let's come here one more time. I think that was just a little bit... Let me make sure we delete this one first. Let's go back here. Let's change this to 75. Even at a 0.75, it's going to take less time than if we were to be doing it at, at um, a 0.9. This looks like even less than that. That'd be a 0.75 overlap. No, I just don't think that's, that looks like the right distance. It looks like it actually, there's less passes here. That's 0.5 per pass. It's more like a 0.25, so I'm a little, a little perplexed by that. Let's, let's come here and do the same thing as a island fill. Well, 
maybe that would do it. I was thinking of adding percentages, uh, but I want to add a full number here. That makes sense. All right. So now we've got a 75. And now I can zoom in here. And still, uh, 75 is going to take a lot less time than 0.90. Now we'll do this distortion. It remembered my last settings there, so I'm going to use those. And let's try this one more time. Okay, it takes a little time to redraw that. Now let's come in here. And now we'll do the simulation again, and we should notice a, a lot tighter toolpath there and, and notice the actual texture a little bit more, but also notice the texture introduced by by the toolpath distortion so really the toolpath distortion and the rapid texture are using similar types of of uh, actions to to accomplish the same result it's just one of them is is distorting the toolpath and the other one is using rapid texture to uh, be able to uh, uh, create the the contours or the the surface using the, the rapid texture contours that are created and we can see here that uh, this is a slightly different effect. We, without the Z movement, it is just kind of an X, X Y. You do tend to see it more on these vertical surfaces. Um, you know, personally, I think I'd probably go more with the with the uh, rapid texture, uh, based upon what I've seen here from the simulations. But they are both different ways to do it to achieve that result.